couple things to think about when we're trying to escape the back, okay? We know what the person is trying to do. They're trying to keep their chest to back alignment, right? So we really want to try and get out of that alignment or detach from them. So we'll go over some specific moves, but just a few things to keep in mind. I need to protect my neck and I need to respect the choke, right? So I have to hand fight. If I'm in the gi, I'm gonna come in, I really like to use my thumbs to come inside the collars to really protect, right? So they can't get their grips inside. I can do the home alone, right? I can bring my hands here. I need to def defend and protect the neck. I don't wanna just rely on my chin, right? Because if I do that, he can break my jaw. I'd rather tap than have a broken jaw. I more so wanna think about bringing my neck up to make my, or bringing my shoulders up to make my neck smaller, right? And then I'm gonna come in and try and get a two on one. So if I can get to the inside of the elbow, and then to the wrist and I bring my elbows down, I'm kind of peeling, right? To get that space and take that pressure away, okay? Especially in this seatbelt, he's not choking yet. If he is starting to choke, I'm really trying to come to the wrist and the inside of the elbow and bite down, right? To create that space. Something else to think about to help create space is to start sinking down low into the hips, right? I can start getting the two on ones we're gonna talk about to create some space. Also, he's gonna pretty much take me to whatever side he'd like to start attacking from. Positive side is the overhook side, negative is the underhook. We talked about the perspective from the back. They don't wanna take me to my back or to their back, right? They wanna take me to a side to keep the alignment. Here, I can bridge and bring Kyle on his back and bring my head towards his head. That's going to create space. It's hard for him to attack when his arms are above his head. And now I can start going for any of my escapes to whatever side I prefer. Okay? So let's go for my favorite escape first. I'm always going to try and go to the negative side when I can. You're going against the choking arm, right? So I feel like it's a little simpler to escape to this side. We're not going to say easy. I'm going to come in, right? And I want to try and bite down. So whether he had me on the positive and I moved him to the negative, or we're like, one, two, three, go, right? We're drilling, and I start shifting myself to the negative. This is where I'm gonna opt to go to as soon as I can. Okay, I'm biting down. I've gotta respect the choke, right? Or that seatbelt if it's really tight. And first thing I'm gonna do is bring my head to the other side of his head. He needs to keep his head to the mat until he wants to create space on his own terms, right? but I'm gonna bite down, I'll go in and I'm grinding my head over his head to the mat. I'm not gonna detach and headbutt my partner, right? But I need to be grindy because they're gonna do everything they can to keep their head here. So I'm really gonna try, I gotta try and get it over, boom. I wanna get my back to the mat. Now I wanna use a little hip pop. So I bring my hips to the party and pop, right? I need to help break kind of that lock even if he still has the lock, I can turn into him, but this puts a lot of pressure on his leg when I have my body weight on his bottom hook, okay? We need to be conscious here if he's gonna start coming up to start like fleshing out mount, right? He can bring his heel to the other side of my hip, right? So I might have to check that to try and trap. I can put my foot on his foot too to pin it, but once I'm here and I'm on his leg, it's hard for him to come up all the way to get to mount. This is gonna be kind of the race. So now at this point, since I've created space, I can just start rotating. So I'm gonna start bringing my inside elbow to the mat and come up and get to his guard. Now I'm out of back control and I can start passing, okay? So let's look at that again, because I wanna also show you what not to do. So we're here. Right? I'm trying to bring him into the negative side. First things first is I'm getting my head to this side. First order of operation, right? What I don't want to do is I don't want to look away from him and try coming this way. He's going to just follow me, right? There's things we can talk about from there in a second, but I'm here. I want to get my back to the mat. If I end up fully clearing his bottom leg and there's no pressure there, right? He can start like breaking apart his um, grip coming up. He can do that guard or the back retention drill we worked on, right? He can do that. If I can, I'm gonna try and stuff or trap this ankle 
if he comes on top so that I can get into my guard, right? But if he doesn't come up yet and we're here, like this is not the escape. We're kind of in a neutral position here, 50-50. So it's whoever's gonna come in on top first, right? So you've gotta be proactive. We're not like, hey, okay, we're done. I escaped the back. Like, no, Kyle can come up, he can get some out. He, I can get him into my guard or I can pop up, right? So I wanna try and get up. So that's the race, okay? Does that make sense, guys? If I can put weight on his bottom hook and leg, that's ideal because it's gonna be harder for him to get up, okay? So we're here. One last time. I'm in, I'm cinching, I'm falling to the negative, getting my head over. Boom. I'm gonna clear. Even if he stays, see how I pop my hip? That breaks his lock, right? But even if he had his lock still, right, I can start rotating if I stay heavy. I can try and rotate up by pulling my elbow back and coming up into his guard. I really want to come in with good posture. I don't want him to start attacking, so I'll bring my hands to his armpit. So it shifts me back and posturing up. Okay? Does that make sense? If we are falling to the positive side or we, you know, find ourselves getting taken that way, okay? And he doesn't necessarily have the choke in fully yet, but still has the seatbelt. Remember, I'm always trying to grip, fight, and defend. So I'm falling to this side here, okay? So here I do kind of like to pop my hips first. This isn't as important as like the negative side. I feel like you've got to get the head. That's the number one. Here you can utilize the hips and then go to try and break the grip or break the grip and then the hips, right? They rhyme. So whichever one you feel is more comfortable for you. One thing here, there's a couple ways that I can get a two on one. So I'm trying to create space by pulling down, bringing my elbows to my hip. And then I'm gonna take this thumb and bring it to the wrist. If I can pop it down, I can get my two on one, and then I can bring it to the other side of my head. Now I'm out of the danger of the choke, right? If I can't get this thumb in grip, right? It feels awkward, or I can't create as much space, and my elbow's up high, this feels really weird. What I wanna do is take my hand on the side that I fall into, and I'm gonna come underneath, bringing my wrist to his wrist. I'll get a gable grip. This is just like what we were doing with that wrist control when we were doing the grip break from that negative side arm bar, right? Or from the arm bar in general. So wrist to wrist, gable grip, and then I'm gonna turn the blade towards his wrist and pop. Then I can grab my two on one, okay? Even if it doesn't pop, like we're here, he's got the grip, I'm coming under and I'm trying to pop, but I can't. It's gonna frame and create space. Boom. Don't get tunnel vision, right? I've got that space. Just bring the hand over. Now I'm in a great spot, right? So I'm safe from the choke right now. I've got this two on one, okay? There could be a sneaky arm lock here too, so just watch that, right? This person's gonna wanna try and pull the elbow back. I wanna come in and see grip under the elbow towards the tricep side. Now, if I stay heavy on the leg, I can do the same thing. I'm gonna push, rotate, and come up into the guard, okay? But I'm basically creating a defense when I do that so that he can't start attacking me in guard right away and I can build my posture, right? But if I do separate from him, I can potentially get to side control. So we're here, I pop, come down, two on one, right away. If I clear and disengage from the hook, right? I still have to be aware if he's coming up on top, I might have to intercept the ankle. I'm gonna get my C grip and right away, I'm gonna stiff arm, build my base to my elbow, come up to my knees. Now I can get a nice gift wrap, get to triple attack and take this back, right? Okay, so. It's just like a Turkish get without Kyle real quick. I've got to stiff arm and use that movement. So I've got the wrist, two on one on the wrist. Then I'm going to switch to the C grip. This hand that had the wrist is gonna come down to the mat. I'm gonna push, get to my elbow, keep moving forward and getting to my knees, okay? So one more time. I gotta be quick with that because if I just hold the wrist, his elbow is mobile and he's gonna get to his elbow and face me. 
We're here. I need to respect this, right? I'm trying to grip fight. Come in, maybe I can't get that one. I'm gonna gable, pop, come in. Just like that. It's hard for him to face me when I'm stiff arming. Okay, but we gotta go for that elbow. Any questions on that? Everyone got it? Let's give it a shot, one, two, three. Now we're gonna talk about our last ditch option when they have the choke in, okay? And they're going towards that falling side arm or towards that positive side, right? The choking arm. Um, so if Kyle's in really tight, and like I said, this is last ditch. So I'm either tapping or I'm getting out of this, okay? So I'm gonna come in. I wanna try and find space, right? Like on that inside of the elbow to bite down on. And if I can get to the wrist, right? The wrist is gonna be another weak point and that's gonna allow me some space, right? So I'm trying to come in, like Kyle's trying to get the choke. He's bringing me to the positive side here and I've got to bite down, right? So what I want to try and do is I want to create some space here by pulling down, but I can also start trying to rotate my head towards his shoulder. I'm not moving anywhere yet. I'm just trying to create some breathing room, okay? So just like when we were doing the one arm choke last week, I was keeping my head connected, but looking into their ear, I'm trying to do the same thing, but looking into their shoulder, bringing my shoulders up now. I want to try and get my knee underneath his top hook. If I can't do that with just my legs, right, as I'm here with a two-on-one trying to defend my life, I'm gonna try and quickly use my hand, right, to clear the hook and come up. But I've gotta be cautious, because if I extend my arm for too long, he can hook it. Yep, exactly, and this is really no bueno, right? So I'm gonna push this down and come back and get to my grip. Now, what I don't wanna do is I don't want to clear the bottom leg. I want to keep this hook because it's going to help me pin him and keep him in this position. It's going to give me leverage. Also, if I go out this way and start coming up to my knees, he can follow me and choke me. Okay, and then get me belly down. We'll talk about an option there in a second. But I really want to make sure I stay tight to him. So what I'm going to do from here, I'm going to go between placing this other hand on the mat and potentially using his tricep as a grip, but I wanna to get to my knees, so I'm on my toes. I'm gonna build my base up to my knees. I stay on my toesies and I spear my shoulder right into his chest. My head and shoulder are driving into him. So I'm staying in a very like tight cylinder, just rotating. I need to keep him in place. That's why I want the bottom hook. That's why I like that arm control and I'm just rotating in towards him, and that's taking pressure off the choke, okay? You gotta do this quick. In V, it's nice, because it slows it down a little and I have some better grips, right? It's gonna be slick in no V, so you gotta kinda work fast. But I'm really trying to rotate my head to look towards him. So Kyle's getting the choke in, right? I'm coming to this side. I'm trying to clear this. If I can't, boom, I come up, and I drive right in, right? But I've got to drive on my toes. I can't stay on my, just driving on my knees with laces in the mat. That's really hard, right? I've got to drive because I'm spearing my shoulder into him and it puts a lot of pressure. So if we're here, he's got the choke in, right? And this doesn't work, right? So I'm coming in, I get here, maybe I can't clear the hook. And I'm trying to defend, I'm still trying to like bite down. I'm trying to find the wrist the inside of the elbow. I'm trying to look at him to create space. What I might do is just roll through, okay? I don't want to just go belly down and give that to him. That's going to really suck, okay? That's the worst position. So if I continue to roll, right, I might roll to the other side, and then I'm on the negative side, right, and I can start escaping and getting up to guard. Does that make sense? So sometimes you've got to just throw yourself into the roll, okay? I can't escape it. I can't clear that top hook. I'm going for a Hail Mary, right? I'm just going to roll with it till I get to that back again and I can switch to the negative side. 